Rosalie. All right, it's 8 o'clock. Let's call the Water and Light Commission meeting for May 1st to order, please. Please call the roll. Commissioner Grindy? Yes. Commissioner Beauchamp? Yes. Commissioner Quirk? Yes. Commissioner Riapel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no delayed reaction Memorex. this time. It's not Memorex today yeah. either. So. All right, approved minutes from previous meeting, April 17th, 2024. So moved. Second. Please call roll. Grindy? Yes. Beauchamp? Yes. Quirk? Yes. Riapel? Yes. Bills and payroll? I'll move. Second. Please call roll. Grindy? Yes. Beauchamp? Yes. Quirk? Yes. Riapel? Yes. Nothing from the public. All right, reports. Todd's not here, and Steve's not here. They forget. Okay. I don't know about Todd. Uh, maybe he's late. But yeah, we'll just we'll, yeah. we'll move on to the Mr. Golstad. Mine's going to be really quick. I have nothing really to report. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, old business, anything, seeing nothing. All right. Twenty twenty. Huh? There's Todd. Oh. There's Todd. All right, we're going to go with reports. We'll start with Mr. Forrester. <laughs> morning, Todd. Good morning. I see you got rid of your friends. I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Making some improvement. There we go. <laughs> Still takes me a little longer to get where I'm going, though. Oh, I hear you. Plus road construction starting. So. Yes. <laughs> I got another 15 minutes to my <laughs> schedule. Um, you know, just a few items. Uh, really nothing new on the 2023 construction. Um, I got to get together with Holt, see when he's going to do that rest of that cleanup and hydro seating and that type of thing. I, uh, I think should be able to do that here pretty soon. Um, 2023 equipment materials. We got the last three reels of 500. The underground cable came in on Monday. So we should be set for those circuit four and five job. Industrial park that we're looking at doing. Um, 2024 miscellaneous, uh, North Holt picked up the contract books last week and he's working on putting the paperwork together that he needs for that. So I'm hoping by your next meeting, I'll have those contracts ready to have them signed. So, and then we're uh, ho hopefully looking at a pre-con next week sometime. Okay. Get started on that. I'm um, also working on uh, our Viking gas crossing up on 23rd and Pebble Beach Road. Um, trying to get that all squared away so we can get that project going. Other than that, uh, our 2024 equipment materials, we've got about half of those materials in. Um, really nothing that's gonna hold up any construction. Other than that, uh, um, the Business Highway 2 lighting project, um, hoping to have that done and submitted to MnDOT this week for a review. So we'll get that moving forward. And then uh, just trying to finish up some map updates. So that's uh, pretty much all I have, unless there's questions. Any questions for Todd? No. Thank you, sir. Right, thank you. All right, 2023 WAPA. Records, donations to Rex, donations to American Crystal. All right, uh, so in 2020, 2021, 2022, we uh, donated the renewable energy certificates to American Crystal Sugar, if you recall. Uh, we did all three, I think we did all three of them in one shot because we were kind of getting into the process, just starting it. Uh, the reason that we, one of the reasons we did it was we can, we're not able to sell those credits. There's... So we donated them. And so knowing that Crystal is our largest customer, good customer, the last time you, uh, you approved that donation. So now just this past week or so, I was notified by WAPA, which is Western Area Power, 
it's a power power where we get our power from. Uh, they told us that the 2023 credits were ready for donation. Um, and so I just thought it was logical that uh, we would donate those credits again to American Crystal Sugar. Um, there is a fee to, to record it in MRETs and Crystal paid that last time and has agreed to pay that again. It's two cents a credit. It was one and a half cents a credit last time. So they're the administers of it, MRETs, and so I suppose that's just an administration, administrative fee. Um, and so with that being said, uh, I guess I'm recommending a, approval uh, to donate 73,043 WAPA RECs to American Crystal and have staff uh, request MMPA to complete the transaction in Minnesota Renewable Energy, Minis Midwest Renewable Energy Tracking System, which is Emirates. So that's what I'm recommending and uh, answer any questions you have. Question. <clears throat> How much of our load is crystal sugar? Yeah, they're in the 40 percentile over that. Yep. 43, 42, somewhere around there. It varies a little bit, you know, of course. Water and electric. I'll move. Uh, how much does this involve? How much money? Well, it, it, it's, it, there's not an exact science to it, but I know when I've been at the, uh, the board meetings for MMPA, I've asked that question, and three, five dollars a wreck, it kind of goes up and down. So, I mean, we're talking, uh, if that's the case, I mean, the value to it, uh, you know, that's a couple hundred thousand dollars. One hundred? A couple hundred. A couple, couple hundred. hundred. It just depends on if you have a need for it or, or a, a use for those credits. Now, um, the larger corporations, companies, they they do follow that, and, and their customers do expect that they try to be renewable, and so those credits are important to to most larger companies. Is there any rules on where this money can go? Well, we, can, we can't sell the credits. No, I know that. <clears throat> so basically... They're going to get these credits going to be donated to them. So if they have uh, CO2 going into the atmosphere, this is an offset for that. Okay. Well, I was just curious, is it, do you have to be a customer to receive the credits? I don't have, I don't well, have that I'm going. at the moment. But you know, <laughs> our city's talking with the EDA about trying to low income housing or what is it? I don't know, yeah, something no. like that. Yeah. Is there any possible way we could transfer that to our I think we EDA? could get, donate the credits to whoever we would like to donate them to you as a commission, not to answer that, but I would confirm All that. Right. But how would that... I don't think it would benefit. It know. wouldn't benefit? No. No, because there's no money being exchanged there. All right. Right. Second. It's not big enough. Please call roll. People in front. Grindy? Yes. Beauchamp? Yes. Quirk? Yes. Reappel? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then, uh, so go to the second item or? Sure. Yes. <coughs> Water treatment plant operator. Higher. So uh, interviews were conducted for the water treatment plant operator on uh, April 16th by jo Commissioner Grindy, uh, Water Plant Superintendent Brian Johnson, HR Generalist Terry Knutson, and myself. The interview panel is recommending the hire of uh, Nicholas McNallis for the operator position. Uh, start date would be May 13th, uh, starting wage 35, 45 an hour. So I'm recommending that we, uh, that you uh, approve the hiring of Nicholas McNallis to fill the water treatment plant operator position. So moved. Second. Please call roll. Randy? Yes. Beauchamp? Yes. Quirk? Yes. Reappel? Yes. All right, thanks. You fit into the team very well. You bet. All right, <coughs> department heads, Todd. Morning. Morning, sir. Uh, got a few couple things here. Electric crews uh, have been still fixing on the wires that went bad. We actually got a call for another one yesterday. We got to go over and take a look at a little update on the wires that went bad on uh, 14th Street and 17th. 
in between on the west side of 220 North. Uh, the crew's been working on that one. What they did find was a bad spot in the wire where the state came through and put the new sidewalk in there. So yesterday the concrete was cut out. Uh, they found a bad spot. Um, they had to bore a little bit further to the south and uh, to a handhold. So there, not only was it bad where we found it bad, but it was bad a little bit further south. So they put a whole section of wire in there. So they did get those fixed and they're on as of last night. And then we did get a call, not this Sunday, last Sunday we had a power outage at MGI Grain. I got a, received a call from the police department that uh, they had no power there. So we went over, uh, called out three, four guys, and we went over there and we found out the transformer was dead. A couple fuses were blown in the transformer. Now uh, we, we killed the, the rest of the power to it and uh, refused the transformer, walked over and looked at the service entrance going into the building and one of the doors was blown off the entrance. So I uh, was in contact with the manager there and we uh, left it off. What they did find was uh, the pipe had burnt up underground, had burnt a pretty large hole through this rigid pipe. <laughs> so they got their electrician over there, um, they pulled out the old wire, put in, pulled the new set in, all the way in. We got them temporary and then last Friday they had made the repairs, they had to bust the concrete out and fix that. So that's back online but it was pretty fortunate that uh, we were able to see that if we'd energized that. Out. Whether it was burnt clear or water in the pipe or whatever, but it, it, I got some pictures. It was a pretty good chunk that it burnt up. So that that was a full shutdown again on Friday to get those get that back on. Uh, the water crews they still have been doing a few nodes and meters as the calls are coming in. Uh, Corey's checked with the manufacturer. We should be receiving some nodes later on this summer. Or they switch suppliers, so we're kind of waiting on that. And then uh, the, uh, the campground is turned on and all the trailheads. Brian has done all the testing, water testing for all those. So they all passed. Um, and as Todd mentioned, we've been working on that Viking gas transmission. We found out that any time you cross there, you gotta apply for another permit. It's pretty involved, so maybe we'll see what we come up with there. And then uh, we have another wire up by the high school on 4th Avenue Northwest. It's bad in the middle of the north end of the driveway on the parking lot entrance. So the guys are gonna be born a new set in between the gas and the fiber up there today. So that's about all I have. Good thing it was a mild winter, that's huh? enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so well, that, that happens. I mean, oh yeah. You know. so, any other questions for me? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. <clears throat> Ryan. Morning. Morning, Morning. sir. Um, start off with just a little update on the Sodash project. Um, we are awaiting a, a fuse chart and so updated um, electrical prints for the control panel um, on the Sodash uh, unit there. Once we obtain those, the electrical inspector should be able to sign off on that and then we should be able to close that project out. Um, <clears throat> Todd mentioned uh, the, the water samples that, we, that we've been collecting the last couple of weeks. Um, we, we did get all the trailheads and those are turned on. There's a small correction there. Uh, we collected the campground and the swimming pool um, earlier this week, Monday and Tuesday. I should be getting those results back today. Um, if they pass and they should, then, uh, then those should be good to go there. Um, we're awaiting those results. Um, <clears throat> last week uh, attended the uh, State of the City address and then um, yesterday kind of a good story Ray was uh, was back out and conducted uh, some demonstrations on environmental quality and um, in the water cycle um, to approximately I think it was around 128 students um, as part of the annual water festival that, that takes place out at Heritage Park out there, so that was kind of nice. Uh, Jordan was out and uh, took some pictures there and stuff too for uh, upcoming correspondence. Um, and then of course Keith mentioned that uh, we've got the new operator starting. 
on, uh, on the 13th. And then uh, lastly, I've got a uh, Minnesota Department of Health planning meeting coming up on the 14th. That's pretty much all I got, and let's give them some questions. Anything for Brian? No, thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Did you want to give something about with Steve? Okay, so that was the soda ash project. Okay. Uh, he asked me to, to mention that and, and, and kind of what's going on with that. So that's a, that's a little hang up there. We're just waiting on some documentation no from problem. Chemco to provide for the electrical inspector. Thank you, sir. You bet. Carla. Nothing unless you have questions. You're sick of taxes. Pardon? You're sick of taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan. <clears throat> Morning. Morning, Morning, sir. <clears throat> so on Monday, uh, we got the EIA 861 report submitted. Thanks uh, help from Keith and Brianna, just getting some of the information for that. And we got that submitted, so that one is done for the year. Last week on Wednesday and Thursday, I was in Plymouth for the MMUA Stepping Into Leadership Program. So we just started that. It starts with the two physical sessions, and there's about 16 people across from Minnesota, a couple from Fargo as well, too. So monthly, I'll be doing three-hour sessions just going over that program and then just reconvening in about a year next May for the final two. So it was a really good program, a lot of good information. And like Brian said, I was over at the uh, Heritage Village yesterday with Ray, and just kind of handed out some promotional items and some info to some of the kids that were there. I think I sat through about five sessions and it was a really good demonstration, a lot of questions. So we had some really good groups there. Um, for May, we're running our 811 ads through Midco again, same thing we did through uh, 22 and 23. Um, with the cleanup week coming up, um, we'll be running radio ads promoting that like we do in the fall. We have that set up through iHeartMedia, so it's always a good opportunity to promote because daily I still get questions about it, so <laughs> should have some pretty good participation in that. Um, a lot of inquiries about weatherization projects, so I got quite a few yep, on the board for this summer. And then looking at uh, commercial projects, uh, Amundsen's Heating reached out to me yesterday about a project over at Valley Golf. So we're looking at doing the AC and uh, furnaces, so a whole HVAC replacement. And then for the last two weeks, I've been kind of watching the progress over at Franzen. They had Eagle do all their lightning LED. And that just finished up, I believe, last week. So we're just waiting on getting that paperwork finalized and all the specs. Any questions on anything? Any questions? No. No. Thank you, bud. Thank you. <clears throat> Corey. Okay, thank you. Mr. Keith. So, a couple items. Last Thursday, I attended a MnDOT meeting. Um, there's a construction project out on 220 that's going to start at 23rd and I think go all the way to 19. I'm not quite sure where it ends, but um, that project's going to start mid May. I think May 13th, they said, somewhere around there and it's gonna end about mid-August. And so Hopefully. Uh, our only involvement is maybe a minor involvement on the intersection. <laughs> Otherwise, we're really not too involved, but it's a traffic, there's gonna be a detour for most of the summer that are going around. And I know they talked about closing the intersection while they work there for a short, short amount of time. And so one thing that uh, we'll probably be inv involved with will be hopefully selling them some water. I know that uh, that they've already had one vendor, one company come to us and request that. And so I did bring that up at the meeting as well, that if they needed any water to contact Tyler or Todd. So, And then the other item, the renewable energy project, uh, I attended the MMPA board meeting in Fairvolt for that. We took pictures. It was, that's kind of our annual thing where we take pictures, but we also discussed the renewable energy project and at this next meeting we're hoping that the decision is going to be made there to, to for them to move forward or not and so we're optimistically waiting for that next meeting and uh, I'll keep you posted. Are we going to just probably set up a meter on a hydrant then for them? To well, that's what they traditionally do. You a water spot, truck. Right, Todd? <laughs> Knife River has already called and talk to us uh, we have an account set up so we have well one hydrant there and it sounded like there could be possibly one other one where they set up their batch plant over there by strata so they've they've gotten a hold of us so i assume they'll need it for their water trucks so yeah, yeah. 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 there's they're shouldering they all kind of you know so they keep the dust down i know they talked about the calcium chloride as well and so 
They also have a media person uh, assigned for that project as well. So, so there should be some good coordination there. So, anything else? Anything else for Keith? No. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Commissioner yep. reports. Anything? Glad to be back. Yep. Good Glad to, to see have you a new guy here. New guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn till May fifteenth. Move. Tuck it. Call roll, please. Grindy? Yes. Beauchamp? Yes. Quirk? Yes. Reappel? Yes. For the new guy, you forgot to bring the donuts, too. I don't know why I did that. Maybe I can work that way. Boys, you have the whole thing. Stop the cigarette. Done.